I woke up to the sight of Kyle's face three inches from mine. Hey, asshole, wake up. Fucking idiot. Stop that! Ben said. Zack just grunted. Oh, look. He's awake. Uh, yeah, I am. I said. Well, shit. W what happened after I fainted? Zack walked into the room where I was lying down on a small bed. After we pulled you up, you fainted from the cold and exhaustion, so I dragged your lazy ass here. We fended off the anglers, and I guess we killed off most of them because they all retreated. I think we were in their territory or some shit. We lost a couple of guys because the anglers dragged them off and brutally ate them alive, but don't worry, you don't know those people, and they weren't canonically important. And you have mild hypothermia, which you should recover from soon. Oh, well, okay, I said, my limbs numb and feeling extremely pained. I feel better now. Oh, where's my sword? Here. Zack violently threw the sword onto my lap. <coughs> Shit. I, I think I can get up now. I stood up. A couple of days later, a few more days until we arrived at the Black Cove, I was out on the starboard deck looking around and being generally bored. Carl had offered to let me shoot beer bottles with the pistol on the lower deck. I ended up with a piece of glass stuck in my arm that severed a vein, and I almost bled out. So the point is, the rest of the boat trip to the Black Cove was turning out to be boring until we actually got there. Four days later, we had finally reached the Black Cove, and let me say, the cove lived up to its name. The enormous and deep cove was surrounded by jagged and rocky cliffs. The only shallow parts were located very close to the rock walls, and despite its name, the cove's water isn't inky black. It's clear as day. But when we went to the deeper areas, the water became murky and dark, and I nearly shit myself. We anchored the boat about a few nautical miles within the black cove, beside a large rock wall, and we prepared to do what we came here to do. As told by Zack, here is the plan in its entirety. Okay, here's the plan. According to our radar readings, the Deep One is still a hundred miles away from the Black Cove. But since the giant creature is probably two to eleven miles long, it should cover that distance in about three days. And keep in mind that we don't know why it wants to come here. Before it comes here, we're going to send our submersibles and get a good look at the area. Then we're going to lure the Deep One into a specific part of the cave using reverse hydrophones. And then we're going to bomb it with a powerful non-nuclear marine bomb that we brought with us. What? You never told us about bombs. I said. Well, our organization and the US government have been on the Deep One for a very long time, considering all the damage it's done. And the only way I can think of getting the job done is bombing it away. And we got permission from the president of something. Holy shit, Trump actually likes you? After we kill it, we're going to use the remains and find out what the creature is and where it came from. That sounds convincing enough, I said. Not. We're probably all gonna die anyway. For some reason, the entire room broke into a cheer. Operation Leviathan, Day 1 This was the day we were going to scout the area using submersibles. And of course, Ben was very, very excited. Duh. After all, this is what he came here to do, drive submersibles. And since there were two submersibles, they required two individual pilots. The other submarine pilot was George. Turns out he learned how to drive submersibles with the money he earned from the military, and was quite good at it. And obviously, I was also chosen to board, since I'm the only one who can tell what a fucking fish was. So an hour later, I was boarding a submersible with Ben and Kyle. And since no one else wanted to go, reasonably, Kyle wanted to come, because he thought it would be fun, and was our main fighting guy. The submarine detached from an enormous ship, and we descended into the murky depths. Besides a couple of very large lancet fish, and some unusual Humboldt squid, there weren't any animals in the area. We descended further, into the deep. About an hour later, Ben radioed the other submersibles, which were following our submersible a couple dozen meters away. Zack, George, and Alex were in the other submersible, and I called the group because we discovered something impossible. 
we discovered an enormous temple, three miles underwater. It was located in a very, very large crater, but it wasn't any ordinary temple. It was massive. If I had to guess, it was a thousand meters long and 900 meters tall. It had the vague appearance of an ancient Roman temple, towering and crumbling pedestals supporting the ancient building. The color of the structure was gray, but even that dull color somehow faded, and algae and other debris covered the eldritch structure. What appeared to be a rectangular altar was covered in very strange hieroglyphs, and it was situated in the front of the massive building. Half of the building was covered in hieroglyphs, all faded and discolored. I was about to say something, but Kyle cut me off. Holy shit, is that? 